Welcome back friends. We've just talked about the beneficial effects of having natural uh, microflora in our body or normal microflora in our body. Now we are going to say what are the disadvantages of having those natural microflora. Though there are mostly advantages to have those normal microflora in our body, except for them we are more susceptible to diseases, but they may sometimes cause some adverse effects also. And in this video we, we are going to see those adverse effects imparted by uh, the normal microflora of our body. So I listed four of them. One is the bacterial synergism. Now for example, in our, uh, in our body, there is a synergistic effect between two types of bacteria. For example, I draw here large amount. So let's say the, this is a tissue re region. This black one are bad. And let's say this red one are good bacteria or natural microflora. We are talking about uh, the disadvantages of having this red one. So there can be a synergism between this normal microflora with the pathogenic microflora. So let me write this as pathogen and this red one as normal microflora. So there can be a synergism between them. For example, they can share nutrients between them to help the pathogenic bacteria to grow. Sometimes it can be more dangerous. They can share antibiotic resistance genes. Actually, as this microflora, normal microflora, are residing there for longer period of time, and they have seen, uh, they have encountered many different antibiotics that we've dealt with in different clinical situations. So they sometimes are kind of having resistance against certain antibiotics. So they are having a gene of antibiotic resistance in, in their cell. So sometimes what they can do, they can pass that antibiotic resistance gene from themselves to this pathogenic bacteria. Then pathogenic bacteria can uptake those genes and they can be more dangerous because they are now not only pathogenic but also antibiotic resistant. Right, so that's a dangerous situation. They can share these genes between themselves. That's a bad effect of synergism. If there is a synergistic effect between the beneficial effect of normal microflora, that there is a synergistic effect with my normal microflora with host or human body in this case, but there can also be a synergism between the normal flora and pathogen. If it is the second case, that means the synergism between normal flora and pathogen, it is dangerous. Now the second thing is the competition for nutrients. Now the competition for nutrients, if the competition for nutrients is between the normal flora and pathogen, then it's good for the host because then the pathogen may not grow. But if there is a competition for nutrients between the normal microflora and the host, then there is a chance that pathogen can take over. Because normally all the nutrients that we take, oh, we digest the food, everything just going to the intestine, and there is a lot of there are a lot of microorganisms sitting there. So they can take those nutrients. Actually, they are taking those nutrients, some part of the nutrients. In turn, they are providing some important factors like vitamin K, vitamin B12, and so on. But they are taking more or more nutrients for their nourishment. That's why they are staying there. Okay, but as they're taking nutrients. If, if there are a lot more, if there is uh, always there is a limit of particular range of microorganisms. If there is this limit it crosses, a lot of microorganisms they are taking many more nutrients. So they can take some vital nutrients which which the host take very less. But due to the bacterial uptake of those nutrients, host receives very low. So as a result of that, host can have some nutritional problems sometimes. Third thing is the normal flora as agents of disease. So the normal flora, we always know that they are good bacteria. They help us, they prevent us from diseases. But another thing is very important that they may also cause diseases. And the disease causing ability of normal flora is always there. I remind you, because the microflora which resides in our skin is accustomed to reside inside the skin as a good bacteria. But it may happen that if this bacteria reaches to some place else, some, some other tissue of our body, which is not perfectly recognized by the bacteria as uh, for a good reason, then the bacteria may become violent, it may cause an infection. So the tissue specificity plays a key role in this case. Because certain bacteria live 
loves to live in particular places so if they are living at those places they won't cause any disease but if they change those place in other tissues other compromised places in our body compromised tissues of our body where let's say immune system cannot reach very far very often in those conditions those bacteria can cause dangerous uh, those bacteria can be dangerous they can cause diseases in those situations okay so that's the case of uh, the agents of diseases and those bacteria those normal flora in that case will be called as opportunistic pathogens so they are opportunistic in nature so if they get some opportunity if some they get some certain place where immune system cells cannot reach normally in those case they will cause the disease and they set the disease in that place right so they are opportunistic in nature and fourth thing is the induction of low grade toxemia it not it generally doesn't occur very often but it may occur because let's say the bacteria that we find in a, in a particular region of our body in fact uh, is gram negative in fact most of our gut, gut bacteria are gram negative like e coli so the gram negative bacteria is present here for example and we know that gram negative bacteria are having an endotoxin coat outside which is the outer layer of their uh, outer membrane right outer membrane of their uh, cell so that particular region or endotoxin or it is also called as lps or lipopolysaccharide layer this lipopolysaccharide is very dangerous especially a particular part of this lipopolysaccharide acts as a dangerous toxin uh, you can see uh, lps or endotoxin video in, a, in my youtube channel too now if this lps reaches the blood stream then it if it reaches the blood stream anyhow it can cause toxemia or the effect similar effects like injecting with this endotoxin it's called the toxemia so it can cause some kind of toxemia degradation of blood cells and many other factors okay inflammation many things they can cause this particular thing if that lps reaches the bloodstream usually it won't but if it reaches in the, the those case it will cause this disease okay so these are in a sense uh, four major disadvantages or harmful effects of having normal microflora but mostly they are having positive effects okay because we require them we need them and that's why the term probiotics comes in because you need to take those beneficial bacteria with your food with your water with your different supplements so that there is a balance between the pathogenic bacteria and the normal bacteria actually there are not one type of normal bacteria found there are many varieties of bacteria found if you want to find you can uh, go to my youtube channel you can find that videos of the normal flora of intestine normal flora of skin and many places you can find there that there are many variety of microorganisms present there but not all of them are uh, always good because they are having the ability to be a potent pathogen but not always they are converted okay so that's in a sense is a disadvantage and i hope that's helpful thank you